15 seconds of the Summit logo. 45 second reveal of a title that has seven letters in it. Like fire and powder. Oh good, Bella's narrating again. She's New filmmakers don't take creative license to stop this vampire sparkle bullshit. Heavy handed Romeo and Juliet reference. Another missing hiker brings the total to three presumed dead. Movie rips off the opens with everyone on edge about a mysterious killer animal that is obviously really a vampire thing from the first Twilight movie. Eight out of the nine cars in this shot are silver. Edward is a dick to his fellow students by parking over three available spaces in a tiny parking lot. I'm 109. Wow. Well, maybe I shouldn't be dating such an old man. You think? Oh, weird. They got a new actor to play Jacob who isn't shirtless all the time. Hello, biceps. You know, anabolic steroids are really bad for you. <laughs> well, I'm just filling out, Bella. Haha, ha, gross. Edward leaves Bella to talk with Jacob in private, but then stands close enough for someone who doesn't even have vampire hearing to eavesdrop on the conversation. I saw this the other day and thought of you. Catches bad dream. But not bad wigs. Edward made it sound like this conversation was going to be something deep, but it was just a bunch of idle chatter and a dream catcher at the end. How come Jacob Black is to give you a gift and I don't? Because I have nothing to give back to you. It's your f***ing birthday, Bella. You don't have to exchange presents. Bella, you give me everything just by breathing. Holy s***. Bella! Alice has one short flight of stairs left, but decides to jump over the railing to get to Bella two seconds faster. Teachers of the world, when you are mouthing along with the bullsh** film you're showing your students, it's time to switch to a new bullsh** film. I hate being celebrated. For worse tragedies, I'm a good Romeo. Edward easily segues into an inappropriate Romeo and Juliet analogy from a discussion about hating birthdays. Killed his true love out of sheer stupidity. Uh, Romeo didn't kill his true love. She killed herself. Provoke the Volturi. Edward casually mentions the Volturi as if Bella's supposed to know what that is. And we don't kill conspicuously. Then what about those vampires last movie that ate the guy that played Santa Claus that one time? They were killing conspicuously out the ass. I found it in your bag. Did you expect to find a camera when you opened Bella's bag, or were you just casually rummaging around in it? This has been looking kind of pale lately. Pot calls the kettle pale. Oh. Paper cuts do not cause vampire enticing blood drips of this nature. Bella appears to have a school lunch entirely composed of pretzel balls. Falling down while running from your failed teen romance cliche. Six minutes of sulking. From October to November, the same bull is on Bella's bed in the exact same place. Either she never went to bed this entire time, or she's an expert in placing things in the exact same position every day. Also, there are three lamps in Bella's room in this shot, and more on the string here, and another hanging lamp, and one more on the shelf. At least one more lamp over here. Oh look, another one back in the corner. Oh god, another lamp. And another string of lamps here. And one f***ing more down here on the little shelf. That's ten lamps in one teenage girl's bedroom. And two of those ten lamps are actually strings of dozens of little lamps. The Cullens have Mac email addresses hipsters. Also, why are all her messages to the Cullens being returned with delivery failure? I know they left the area. At least part of the reason is so they don't smell her blood and want to eat her, but they can't still use their .me email address wherever the f*** they're hiding out at? They can't still email this poor girl? There's no blood smell in email, is there? It's not normal, this behavior. It took three months for Bella's dad to realize her behavior wasn't normal. Keep walking. Movie just decides on a whim that Edward can appear as a mist to his lover to warn her of danger. Raising the question why he never did this before now, and of course, why he never does it again in future movies. Bella, that's Quill and Embry. I'm Quill Tara. Hey, thanks for giving me your last name too, man. I appreciate I like it. Uh, we're friends. I don't know. Ooh, burn! Ooh, burn. Did the director just go with the throwing a piece of pizza and it turns into a shop tool yeah. in mid-air transition? That's a bold choice. It's like the director got the gig by going into the pitch meeting and blowing everyone away with his creative vision for never-before-seen bike shop transition shots. Is that Sam Ely? Bella recognizes some random shirtless Native American teen from a quarter mile away in a moving car. Hey, Taylor Lautner's back. Where was he the whole movie? Also, I know we wanted a gratuitous Jacob takes off his shirt shot, but are we really treating a fresh, bleeding head wound with a dirty, sweaty t-shirt that a teenage boy has been wearing while riding dirt bikes all day? A bear, maybe? Or an alien. These so-called bear attacks are all over the news, and yet Angela's friends decide she's crazy for saying she saw a bear. We could, we could check out love spelled backwards as love. How about face punch? Well, it's definitely January if there are movies called Love Spelled Backwards is Love and Face Punch. I heard it sucks. Movie that sucks cast judgment on fake movie that sucks. How can we squeeze this Burger King product placement into the movie? I mean, they paid us a bunch of money. Oh, I know! 
Trash! Also, the bag is turned so that the side with the logo is facing the camera in this shot. But in the next shot, the bag has been delicately turned so as to reposition the logo side of the bag to be facing the camera again. Gun down, or I'm gonna blow your freaking head off, both of you. A movie that apparently sucks has way better dialogue than the real movie it's in. Pontypool? the f*** is that? You want me to put you in the hospital? I think Bella was right about those steroids she was joking about earlier. The movie's over. What are you doing? The movie's apparently over, but no one's walking out of it. Jake. Uh, your dad said- Man, half this f***ing movie is just voiceover of Bella leaving voicemails and writing letters to people. We can't be friends anymore. Instead of just explaining to Bella, who clearly already knows about vampires, that he's a werewolf, Jacob treats her like Encino Man and tries to hurt her feelings to make her go away. Pseudo-villain from the first movie shows up in a field looking for Bella just on the off chance she's there. Why? Is there any f***ing reason he can't do this on a regular basis? You know, have conversations with her, tell her he loves her, keep her from going insane. He only ever shows up to scold her or warn her. They could have had some weird, missed vampire version of Skype sex, even. Make it quick. You will feel nothing. Then do it already. Lupus ex machina. I wish I could explain, but I literally can't. Jacob botches the literally protocol. Jake, what are you doing? After having literally seen Jacob jump up to a room like a cartoon, now she begins to worry about him jumping out of the window. Also, you live in a world where vampires exist. How many clues are going to hit you over the head that Jake's a werewolf before you realize it? Bella, who has shown no propensity for violence so far, decides now is the time to slap a naked dude in a gang. And because of what? Because he's laughing? Also, I guess werewolves have all the composure of a drunk in a sports bar. Jake, Bella, I mean, are you really going to have to wait until Jacob turns into a f***ing werewolf right in front of you before you realize he's a f***ing werewolf? Wait, what? Jacob's a werewolf? Oh, f that explains so much. Why does Mist Edward appear to warn her of vampires and other general risky behavior, but not show up with any warnings before she goes and learns the secrets of the werewolves, his mortal enemies? Oh, hey. About Emily, Sam's fiance? Don't stare. It bugs Sam. Do we really have to go through suspense about what's wrong with Emily so that Bella doesn't stare? Just say she's got horrible scars on her face. In fact, why didn't you just say that on the ride over here? Horribly scarred person is turned around so that it's some great reveal that they're scarred cliche. That's a ton of muffins. Was she expecting all these dudes to show up to the house? Why were they all going to Jacob's house then? Sure was convenient that Bella was there to see all that wolfing out if all they were doing was grabbing a buddy for breakfast. Can't really run with vampires, because they're fast. Yeah. Well, we're faster. Dude, the vampires we've seen in these movies move at a blur. Do you have better editing software to make you look like you're faster than that? Where did Jacob get a shirt after the melee with Paul? So you're a werewolf. Yeah. Last time I checked. <sighs> well, can't you find a way to just... Stop. Oh my god. I've watched horrible movies before, but this line might be the stupidest line I've ever heard in my life. First off, Bella, who fell in love with a vampire, would probably never say this. Second, this line just begs the movie to steal a page from the X2 script and give its monster characters a gay subtext. It's not a lifestyle choice, Bella. I was born this way, I can't- Movie steals a page from the X2 script and gives its monster characters a gay subtext. Also, Lady Gaga lyrics turned movie dialogue cliche. I was born this way. The only thing we do kill, vampires. So what was Paul gonna do to Bella when he roared raged into a werewolf five minutes ago? Was he just gonna give her a couple scars and say, good day, madam? Victoria's here? I was. We chased her all the way to the Canadian border the other night. We had to stop there because Border Patrol would have been pissed. She's fast. You don't know how fast- Did you not hear Jacob say they chased Victoria all the way to the Canadian border? Yeah. Bella's memories of Edward also include his Volvo XC60. Man, she misses Edward, but she misses the car too. Apparently a wolf walked through here, hopped on one leg, and managed to avoid making tracks anywhere else. What happened to the other people who were hunting with Charlie and Harry? Oh no, not the water. How can we ever chase her now? Even though we were shown clearly jumping into this water earlier in the movie. So Victoria jumped into this water to escape werewolves, but she was somehow able to smell Bella underwater and swam back? You saw what happened to Emily. Sam got angry. Lost it for a split second. And was standing too close. What is it with this standing too close bullshit? If Emily had been a hundred feet away, would Sam have been able to not turn into a werewolf? Or turn into a wolf, but not start a domestic abuse situation? Seems like the turning into a wolf part of this equation is the problem, not the distance. You'll never be able to take that back. Just like everything else that happens in the past. What if I got mad at you? Well, I'll be sure to run away the correct distance. Whatever the f*** that is. Seriously? Mist Edward doesn't have anything to say about this? There's a vampire. I can smell it. How come you couldn't smell it two minutes ago when you drove up to the house? If the movie's being consistent, Jacob should be a werewolf now because they just can't help themselves. I saw a vision of you. You jumped off a cliff. So you came to the house? 
For what reason? And you broke in, too. I can't see past you and your pack of mutts. Don't. Alice's ability to see the future is clouded when it comes to werewolves. Just because. Why does Jacob pick up the phone at the Swan House? The whole reason is so he can cryptically tell Edward Bella's dad is prepping for a funeral without mentioning who it's for, and so that Edward can break his phone and the movie can continue this ridiculous charade of comparing itself to Romeo and Juliet. He's gonna make a scene. Show himself to the humans. No, when? He's gonna wait until noon. Phew. He's inadvertently given us just enough time to get there and stop him. Instead of racing to the Volturi, why doesn't Bella jump off a cliff, or otherwise try and kill herself? Then Miss Edward will show up and he'll realize she's not dead. Case closed. Rather than taking advantage of the long car ride to the city, Alice waits until they arrive and wastes precious seconds doling out much needed instructions. Bella, you're the only one he can't see coming. Well, if she was coming to him by way of dangerous dirt bike ride, he could see her coming, right? At least the missed version of him could. Instead of screaming or doing something logical, Bella just keeps running toward Edward silently. Nipple Bruce. I just couldn't live in a world where he dies. So again, I ask, what's so special about Bella? Is she going to make the world a better place by sulking in her bedroom? Telling people not to give her presents on her birthday? Basically being humorless? Teasing other dudes because they don't match up to Edward? I mean, had it not been for Alice and Rosalie, he wouldn't have even known her life was in danger. Dakota Fanning isn't being precocious in this scene. <laughs> I see nothing. I know, right? Alice's vision doesn't see the animated singing animals that would accompany this future. Let us be done with this. This character represents how we all look and feel while watching this movie. <laughs> vampire series once again doesn't show us all the cool shit that happens with stories involving vampires. I already consider you my sister. So, prospects are not good that these two will make out later? I already consider you a part of the family. Oh, you too. Thanks, it's me keeping you away. You stay the hell out of my head. How can Edward poke around in Jacob's head, but Alice can't see the future when it comes to werewolves? Would someone please map out the rules for this series already? Jacob. Dear Alice, this f***ing movie is still going on. Can you believe it? Not one pie was f***ed in this movie. Let's be done with this. I prefer the Red School's exclusivity. They let any old riffraff into this place. I see. Mm -hmm. Why are you slumming it? I was just buying a part for the uh, rabbit. You should really come take a ride when it's done. Is it fast? Um, it's, it's decent. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Good. It wasn't over for me. I waited for you for seven years. It wasn't over. I spent half the night talking to some girl who's looking around the room to see if there's somebody else who's more important she should be talking to. And it's like I'm supposed to be all happy because uh, she's wearing a backpack. Do the Collins visit often? Use the force, Luke. Brothers got a hug. I can't see past you and your pack of mutts. Don't get me upset. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. You know what Bella could have been doing all those months Edward was away instead of sulking at the window? Watching Hulu Plus. You know, she's into shows like Jimmy Kimmel Live and Shark Tank, but with all the vampires and werewolves in her life, it's not always easy to catch her favorite shows as they air. But with Hulu Plus, all she needs is an internet connection and several months of clinical depression due to an absent undead boyfriend. Head to HuluPlus.com slash sins today, and you too can have the power of your favorite TV shows and movies on your mobile device, wherever your heart may lead you. There it is! I have led you to it! There's a special two-week trial offer just for our viewers. That means you. So sign up at HuluPlus.com slash sins today.